It's 12 o'clock on a Wednesday and this is the Wizard Puppy Review on this week's show. <laughs> right. <laughs> First up this week is Ultra Gum by Richard Sanders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, doing the Wizard Product Review with David Penn was one of the funnest periods of time in my life. I absolutely loved it. It's 12 o'clock on a Wednesday and welcome to the Wizard Product Review. I'm Craig. I'm Dave. Used to love that. Absolutely love that. And to be honest, I'd still be doing it now, uh, really. I left. There's a few different reasons why I left. I've talked about it before on the channel. Got busy, had a family. Needed more money. A lot of people don't realise, never worked for World Magic Shop. I never got paid to do the Wizard product review. Never got paid. Never got paid anything. In fact, it cost me because I had to go to Birmingham. Uh, and I don't drive. Don't know if you guys know that. I don't drive, so I had to make my own way to Birmingham. And then when they moved to rugby, I had to move to rugby. I had to catch three trains to get to rugby and a taxi, unless they picked me up. Um, and then after rugby, it was kind of Northampton, which was even getting further and further away. It cost me to do the Wizard Product Review, but to be honest, it wasn't a money thing. I'd still be doing it right now if it wasn't for the fact that I felt I had to leave because of the fallback from the magic community because of red. What you guys need to understand before I get into this whole feud with myself and Sean, uh, uh, Sean Hayden and now David Penn, my feud with the Wizard Magic Reviews they now call themselves, is that red was the lowest period of time in my life. I've tried to address it since I've started this channel. I've done honest trailers on it. I've done videos on it. I've addressed it numerous times in the Q&A. And I have talked over and over again with people online that bring up red. Every single time somebody gets into an argument with me, I know within five minutes, red is gonna get brought up. It's that thing that continues to follow me along over and over again. And that's why I left. I left because the whole magic community turned against me, and rightfully so, I stole Bob King's trick, and I marketed it as my own. Now, I've, I've talked openly on the channel about what I did about that. I pulled it off the uh, off, off sale. Myself and World Magic Shop worked really hard to try and damage control and damage limitation, and uh, it, it, lots of things were done. But ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, it caused the community to turn against me. And I, I was getting death threats, I was getting uh, uh, constant messages, my wife, my family were getting messages. It was not a good time, it was not a good period of time in my life, I felt really low. And I don't use this term very often, but my mental health was suffering. And uh, I, I would come home from, uh, I would come home from doing the Wizard Pro Review, or I'd be at home with Sarah, and I'd constantly be distracted because I couldn't help myself. I'd read the Magic Cafe or the Facebook groups or whatever it is and see these things where people were saying about me. And, and I'd read it and I'd see the videos that people were making. There were some cracking videos that people were making. Craig Penny is like the anti-performer. Dude is like out there, no joke, licking his hands every five seconds, getting in people's faces, like telling people what they need to do, putting things in people's hands, snatching things out of other people's hands. Like, and he looks horrible. Dude, you need to shave. Looks like the guy looks like he's been stuck in a basement playing video games, drinking Mountain Dew for like five and a half years. Like, never brushed his teeth. Looks like, and he comes out wearing like a T-shirt and like a, a bazinga, bazinga. Like, what is that from? That's that from that uh, that TV show, bazinga. You know, and that Big Bang Theory, I think. And then there's a, and he's wearing like this crappy, unfitted jacket. It's like, dude, I don't know if you're trying to be like a 12 year old kid boy child thing or like if you're trying to be like a businessman like I dude you look like your, your hair is like unkempt and you look like you smell bad like your teeth and it really hurt because one thing that I think you guys probably know if you've watched this channel for the last year you know that I love magic I absolutely love magic and I felt I had to and I, I, I loved hanging out at conventions and being around magicians and jamming I, I loved all that and I felt I had to move away from it because I couldn't handle it anymore. I just wasn't sleeping. It was a horrible time. I was, it was the lowest point in my life. And I'm really glad I did because it allowed me to focus on other stuff. It allowed me to focus on my family, it allowed me to focus on my business. And it allowed me to come back rejuvenated to the magic community many, many years later with a renewed zest for kind of wanting to kind of give back, which is where Magic TV all came about from. So why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you this because I need you to understand 
that red was a horrible moment for me. I absolutely hated it. I tried to talk about it as much as I can, but I was in a very low place. And Dave knows that because Dave was there. Sean wasn't, but Dave was there. He knows what I was going through at the time. And also he knows that that wasn't done on purpose. He was there at Will Magic Shop. When I actually showed this around to people, Andy Gladwin, I remember showing it to Andy Gladwin many, many years ago. There's a reason why I'm bringing up red and I'll get to that in a minute. But first of all, this is probably my final video on this whole continuing saga between myself and Sean, and now Dave has brought himself into the mix. And the first thing that I need you to understand, I didn't start this. I've had nothing but nice things to say about Sean and Dave and the Wizard Pro Review. I've been very careful to never say anything negative about Dave Penn ever since I left the show. I have never anywhere said anything negative about Dave Penn. Ever. Or Sean. And then out the blue, Sean calls me a chicken for not sending him visible. Kind of was a bit out the blue. Not a big deal, you're thinking. But what you don't understand is two weeks before, I'd actually sent the... Of course, Dave and Sean know I haven't got copies of Visible here. They're not with me. It's not my job to send them out. It's the producer. It's Murphy's or it's 1914. That's who it is. Murphy's generally send out the review copies... Wizard Magic Review is one of the biggest review channels in the world. Murphy's send them review stuff. Maybe Dee thought that, sh that they were going to get sent it by Murphy's. But the point of the matter here is, weeks before that even happened, literally before it even got released, before it was even on pre-sale, I sent a copy of the recording link, the tutorial link that you get in the packaging for Visible. I sent that to Dave. I said, share it around with Sean, share it with Wayne. I want you to review this product. I sent that link to Dave Penn before anyone had that link. And he said, oh, are you going to send a physical product? And I said, yeah, the physical product will be sent, but it's not by me. But the point is, all you get in a physical product is two invisible decks. You're telling me Sean and Dave haven't got two invisible decks? That was sent weeks ago. That was the, the, the ring was sent weeks ago. So when he called me a chicken, it was kind of like, well, what, 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 where, where did this come from? I've already kind of pretty much sent you the project, but okay, okay. I took it in the manner which it was intended, I'm assuming, and I made light of it, and I did a rant video. And I'm sure that anybody who's watched my channel will know that that was not a serious rant video. You can tell when I'm serious about a rant. When I did a rant about somebody uploading my stuff to YouTube, that was me being serious. That was me being annoyed. The, va the rant video I did as a rebuttal to the chicken thing, when I was channeling AJ Styles, the face that runs the place, and when I was channeling Hulk Hogan and, and The Rock and all of these different people, that was just me having fun. And then Sean came back, fair enough, but he brought up Red. He didn't need to bring up Red. And that's when the first moment in this whole thing kind of annoyed me because he read out that comment and, uh, and, and, and the comment said, hey, everyone knows why you kicked off the Wizard Product Review. Everybody knows why you left the Wizard Product Review. You were kicked off. Dave Penn kicked you off because of Red. And then Dave sat there and said, I can neither confirm or deny this. Now, I, I can tell. I've known Dave long enough to know that he, he was joking. I mean, maybe he's changed in the last few years because when I left the Wizard Product Review, I didn't really see Dave much after that point. Didn't really see him much. Um, we used to hang out all the time, hang out all the time. But as soon as I left the Wizard Product Review, probably seen each other in the last five or six years, about 10 times. So maybe he's changed, but I'm pretty confident that that was a joke. But the thing is, Wizard Pop Magic Review gets way more subscribers, way more views than this channel. Still get tens of thousands of views. I get a thousand. I'm growing my channel. There's a lot of people who watch that that don't see my stuff. And so all they're seeing is that side of things. And they're saying Dave Penn going, I can neither confirm or deny. The reason I left the Wizard Product Review, I was sitting there thinking, well, that's not the reason. The reason I left was because I couldn't handle it. it I technically did leave because of Red, but it wasn't because Dave got rid of me or anything like that. I've talked about this on the channel before in great detail. That wasn't the reason. The reason I left is because I just couldn't handle it anymore. Couldn't handle the abuse that I was getting from magicians. I needed to focus on my mental health. I needed to remove myself from that situation. So that kind of irked me a bit. The fact that it, it, Sean could have come back with anything. And he came back with Red. And Dave knew that the moment that Red happened all those years ago was a really low place for me. 
So I went back with another video and I tried to deflect by talking about Sean. And I talked about Fizz Roulette because frankly, I was a bit annoyed because I, you know, I've always thought well, Fizz Roulette is just like Fizz Master. There's no difference. There's, there's no difference between this and this. And, and so I did my rebuttal video trying to push everything away from Red and push it onto Fizz Master and, and then offered the magic challenge and so on and so forth. And then we come to the wizard product review, wizard magic review that happened last Wednesday, um, where the first nine minutes of the program was about them addressing me. And you know what? That's absolutely fine. It's in their right to address me. I mean, to be honest, they, they upload one video every two weeks. I upload 26 videos a, a week. So I think they need to focus on reviews. But whatever, whatever, it's their, it's their choice. But there's three things that really annoyed me, really, really annoyed me in that video. And, and really kind of upset me a little bit as well. And I want to address all three of them. The first one was when Sean uh, talked about having letters from Paul Harris and that uh, Paul Harris has given him his blessing to release Fizz Roulette. And Dave said on camera, there's a massive world of difference between Fizz Roulette and Red, which is based uh, uh, shortly afterwards, seconds afterwards saying, oh, Sean did the right thing. Sean did the right thing. You've got letters from Paul Harris, haven't you? This is how everything should be done. It's completely different to the situation with Red. Now, the underlying tones there is I did something wrong with Red, and I did, but there's no difference between Red and Fizz Roulette. And let me explain why very, very briefly. First of all, Sean, I'm so glad you came to an arrangement with Paul. I really am. That's awesome. But here's the thing. When you were getting blasted on YouTube, and you were getting blasted in a few different places, but let's use the World Magic Shop YouTube channel as an example. When you were getting blasted on YouTube, at that point, you po and there were people like Justin Miller and a few other people calling you out. You posted on there after the thing had been released and said uh, you were defending yourself. And you wrote a really long post defending yourself. And you talked about how um, Fizz Roulette uh, is just your routine and this and that and the other. And it's a completely different situation. And, and you credit Paul, so that's okay. And, and you wrote a post defending yourself, and that's absolutely fine. If you had permission from Paul at that point, you would have just put that. You would have just said, actually, um, I've got permission from Paul Harris to market this. You didn't put that. So you didn't have permission when all that kicked off. So you got permission afterwards. So in other words, it's exactly the same thing as Red. You released this without Paul Harris's permission and obviously then reached out to Paul, came to some sort of arrangement and ended up carrying on selling it, but doing the profit share with, with Paul. The only difference is when I released Red, I released it, um, but I pulled it from the market. I didn't do a profit share. We pulled it from the market immediately. We still reached out to Bob King. There's no difference. There's absolutely no difference. Now, Dave was sitting there on the sofa and saying, oh, well, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a completely different thing. And oh yeah, it's absolutely fine. Just because you've got permission on Paul, of Paul at this point now, does that make it right? Does that make it okay? It's the same method. It's been suggested before in the art of astonishment. There's not really any creativity there. Now, I know that, Dave, you've introduced yourself last week on the Wizard Pro Review and you started talking about all of this. You're probably going to turn around and go, well, no, it's absolutely fine. But let me ask you a question. When... John Allen released Flexion. You weren't happy. I know you weren't happy. I was there with you. You weren't happy because it was the same gimmick as Coinvexed. It was the same gimmick. And it was used to bend something that people have on them. A key or a coin in your case. And you weren't happy that he released that. In fact, you were really pissed off about it. What's the difference between that and, and Fizz Roulette? It's the same method. It's already been done before what, what, what Sean was doing. Sean's just created his own presentation for it. So if Flexion annoyed you and wasn't okay, why is, why is Fizz Roulette okay? And why do you say it's completely different to Red? You know that I didn't release Red on purpose. And since you guys have been bringing up Red, 
I've had so many people come back to me and comment on it all of the time. I've just released the um, Sally Stebbins project, the Beyond Stebbins project. And I immediately have a, had a message off somebody going, oh, you rip off everything. Now, it's an actual post on YouTube. You rip off everything. You rip off the invisible deck. You rip off this. You rip off that. You're just a liar. Red. You know, I've had probably 30 or 40 people reach out to me and say, Red, I've had Sarah contacted again because of Red. In the last two weeks, it's come up over and over again after I've spent so long trying to put it behind me and move on. Everybody makes a mistake. Everyone makes a mistake. You've made mistakes. I've made mistakes. Sean's made mistakes. I don't like continuing to dwell on the same thing, especially when the person brings it, bringing it up knows what my mental health was like back then and knows how low a place I was in. That's the first thing I didn't like. The second thing I didn't like, I really didn't like this, is at the very end of your little nine-minute segment, turning around and saying, um, oh, Craig couldn't make it again. He rang us up and he, he cancelled. Yeah, because he's a big fat chicken. Well, yeah, I did ring you up and cancel, Dave. I did ring you up and cancel. Did it because my, my wife's mother died a couple of days before and Sarah was up in Doncaster dealing with the funeral arrangements and the family. When I rang you up a couple of days before Friday and I told you I was going to be coming to do the filming, you turned around to me, I turned around to you and I said, oh, Sarah's going to be up in Doncaster. I'll have to look after the kids. But when she comes back, fine, I'll come straight over. I then rang you as soon as I knew Sarah wasn't going to get back because it took her longer to deal with all the funeral stuff up in Yorkshire. And I rang you and I told you. And I told you why. I told you it's because Sarah's mum's died and I'm looking after the kids. I even offered to get a taxi when um, it, uh, she got back. I told you. So if you're going to use this, at least tell the full story. It's not like I'm a big fat chicken because my wife's mother died. I really think that you're kind of twisting things here at this point. Let's take you as an example. On Tuesday, just gone, you cancelled the smoke and mirrors lecture, even though because you only had a quarter of a tank of gas. And yeah, there's a fuel shortage here. So it's really good reason to not go and fulfill your lecture obligations. But I've been traveling around the country the last two weeks. I've filled up probably 10 times and I haven't had a problem anywhere in the country. I've got a team of 100 entertainers that have gone out and done gigs and haven't had a problem filling up at any point ever. And you managed to get fuel in your car three days later to drive up to Grimsby to do a show with Tom Wright. So somehow you magically made fuel up here, but you canceled that lecture. You had a good reason. I had a good reason. My wife's mom died. Why did you need to even bring that up? Why was that even a thing? Sean, you know, people cancel for various different reasons. In lockdown, I booked tickets to Sean's virtual show. I paid £25 on the Wednesday. He told me the tickets were going to be for seven o'clock on the Saturday. I, I, messaged, I had no Zoom link. And in the morning of the Saturday, I messaged him. He said, yeah, I'll send the Zoom link over by 12 o'clock. Messaged him at 12 o'clock, no answer. Messaged him at 3 o'clock, no answer. Messaged him at 5 o'clock, no answer. At 6.15, 45 minutes before the show was meant to start, he messaged me saying, I'm not feeling very well. I'm cancelling. I'll let you know when I'm rescheduling it for. I don't think that was particularly uh, professional. But I said, yeah, OK, if you're feeling ill, no problem. I'm locked down. It's not like I'm going anywhere. People cancel for various different reasons. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. I think my wife's mom dying is a good enough excuse not to use that to twist what's going on between you and me. And then we've got the, the main event, the thing that you spent most of the time on, which was me telling people that I'm in the, in the magic circle. And I can't tell you how many people have messaged me about this mainly because you insinuated that I was lying to my customers. Now, first of all, Dave, that whole thing that you staged was so cringy. You and Sean, I'm so glad that you're professional magicians because honestly, your acting sucks balls, dude. It was just cringeworthy. You set this whole fake thing up. Oh, I, I can't believe that Craig would lie to his subscribers. Craig wouldn't lie to his subscribers. All you have to do is prove that you're in the, uh, uh, in the magic circle. Well, let me explain something very quickly to clear this up because it can be cleared up very, very quickly. When I joined the magic circle, I did a lecture and off the back of the lecture, that was my audition. And I was told I was going straight in at AIMC, 
which stands for the Associate of the Inner Magic Circle. Now, I've been to the Magic Circle headquarters about seven times in my life. I've only recently come back in after an extended absence away. I don't really understand the degree levels, but as far as I'm aware, there's MMC, which is member of the Magic Circle, AIMC, which is the Associate of the Inner Magic Circle, and MIMC, which is the member of the Inner Magic Circle. I said I went straight into the Magic Circle. Now, if that's not the right terminology, I apologise. I would have assumed AIMC, associate of the inner magic circle. If you're associated with something, you're a part of it. Is that right? Like, I, I would have said MIC, member of the magic circle. You can't mention inner. But the degree title, AIMC, makes me believe that I can say I'm in the inner magic circle. Is that not right? Is that, is that, is that not correct? If it's not correct, I'm very sorry, but that's how I thought it was. I thought AIMC meant that I was at a higher level and I was in the Inner Magic Circle. I didn't say I was a member of the Inner Magic Circle, I said I was in the Inner Magic Circle. If that's not correct, I apologise, but you knew what I meant, and yet you still decided to play that little charade where, first of all, you call my ethics into question, then you call me a liar, Oh, Craig wouldn't lie to his, uh, his customers. Craig wouldn't lie to his subscribers. Craig wouldn't do that. I know how we can clear it up. Let's call Mike Sullivan. And then you ring the admissions secretary or whatever he is, the membership secretary, who's also on the council, because both you and him are on the council, aren't you? The two of you are on the council. And you ring him up and you stage this whole thing where he's laughing down the phone. What, Craig in the magic circle? Ha, 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 ha. Don't waste my time. Now, there's two things about this that really upset me. The first thing that really upset me is um, I've never had Mike Sullivan uh, laugh at me down the phone before. Um, he didn't laugh down the phone at me three weeks ago when he rang, or three or four weeks ago, when he rang me up to do a review show special on Wayne's Dietrich's line. That wasn't a, a, a gigglesome moment for him. He hasn't ever, uh, you know, when he asked me to do a review of the key on a five by five, he didn't ever laugh down the phone at me, but all of a sudden the mere mention of my name causes him to laugh. I think what happened here is you decided to set this whole thing up to ridicule me, assassinate my character, and make me look stupid to all of my subscribers. I can't see any other way around it. And you got Mike to play ball just to keep going with this whole thing. I don't see another option here. I don't see another way around it. And honestly, is that really... Now, bearing in mind, bearing in mind here, that that episode of the Wizard Product Review, I think it's on about 8,000 views on YouTube. It's on about 10,000 views on Facebook. It's been debated all over the internet. Whilst my average videos get about 2,000 because I'm a growing channel. So, conservatively, there's about 10,000 to 14,000 more people that have seen that that will ever see my reply on my channel. And what you've just done there is you've just made me out to be a complete and total liar. And you've made it so that you've got two council members laughing because a member of the Magic Circle has made a mistake in how they, uh, how they tell people what their degree title is. Is this how the Magic Circle deals with things? Is this how it happens? Is this how the magic circle deals with things? Because there's going to be a lot of people watching this that maybe one day want to get into the magic circle. Maybe one day they'll want to join the magic circle. Definitely going to be a lot of people there that have got respect for you and Mike. And what you've done here is you've basically just created a scenario because I think this is as fake as balls. But you know what? Some people might think it's real. So you've created a little scenario here where there's a member that has said something incorrect about their degree level. And you've said that the way that the council deals with this is by publicly humiliating them on the internet, laughing at them down the phone. Really? When the Magic Circle has had a year of people accusing them of bullying? Do you really think that's the right approach? Do you really think that's the right way to go to show that the Magic Circle has changed with the new council? having two council members laugh at one of the members over a mistake they made on an online video. I don't think that's the right thing to do. It kind of hurt me. Now, here's the thing. I can give as good as I can get. 
And I've tried to think about how to do this rant several times, several different ways I've tried to figure out how to do this rant. Ultimately, I've decided to go for this approach. It's not even a rant. It's not even a rant. Here's the thing. You knew that I was in a very bad place with red and it really affected me. You know this. And yet you decided to bring red into this. You know that I've never insulted or had a go at you or gone after you at any point ever. This was between me and Sean. I have also never said anything negative about the magic circle. This was between me and Sean. Since coming back and apologizing about that blog that I wrote about the magic circle, I've had nothing but praise to say about them. I've defended them everywhere. I've done multiple interviews with people like Bob Pound and you talking about how great the magic circle is. So I've never attacked you or the magic circle. And yet in the last week, I've had the week from hell. I've even had people contact my office telling the office staff in my office that they shouldn't work with me because I'm a liar and a cheat and I ripped off somebody else's magic product. That's not right. That is not right. That is crossing the line. That's not right. So here's the thing. This is my last video on the subject. I'm not happy that you brought up red. I'm not happy that you brought up me not coming to the, uh, to, the, to the thing without bringing up my mom. And I'm also not happy with the whole whatever it is, that little sketch show that you decided to do with Sean and Mike. And, and I'll be having a conversation with Mike about this at some point as well. By the by, I'm just going to draw a line under it. I'm just forgetting about it. No more wrestling promos. No more back and forth between you and me. No more back and forth between Sean and me. I want to make this fun again. This has not been fun for me in the last two weeks. It's sure as hell not fun for the viewing audience. Look at the comments on the last Wizard Product review and try and find someone that's enjoying this little back and forth at the moment. So you know what? This is what we're going to do. I would love a magic off with Sean. You know what? Taking aside all the bravado, taking aside all of the, uh, taking aside all of that, I'd love a magic off with, uh, uh, with um, Sean Hayden. Uh, I think I could beat him. But that's because I've got an ego. I've been in this business for 27 years. You've got to have an ego to get to where I have. But you know what? I know Sean's got an ego as well. And I know he probably thinks he can beat me. And I think it'll be a lot of fun for everybody to watch a magic off between me and him. What's a magic off? It's two people going back and forth and having a great time. And I think that we should do it at the Magic Circle. And I think that you should reach out to Daryl Rose and you should make it happen. Because I think it'll be a lot of fun for people to watch. And I think win, lose or draw, me and Sean will shake hands. And everybody in the audience will be the winners because they'll have a good time. And I still consider you a friend, Dave. And you know what, Sean, we don't know each other very well, but I'd happily shake your hand and buy you a beer. Because up until about a week ago, this was fun for me. This back and forth thing, I, I had a blast. And then for me personally, it crossed the line. So let's stop. And let's bring it back a bit. Let's just organize this magic off. Have a lot of fun with it. And uh, I think you need to get back to doing reviews and talking less about me. I'm going to get back to ranting about people like Jabrizi and people that deserve it. And we'll just organize a magic off and we'll promote it on our channels. And then that'll be that. And you know what? I'd love to come back on the Wizard Pro Review at some point and Dem Red, uh, not Red, <laughs> that would never happen. Uh, Dem Visible, Dem Stebbins, whatever it is, we can make that happen as well. Absolutely. I'm sure I'll be able to make it this time. But, you know, things happen. I'm sure you're aware of that. And one more thing. To everybody watching this that's not on the Wizard Product Review, if you ever in a place where you feel really shit and you feel really low and you feel like the magic community is coming down on you like a ton of bricks and you feel like you've got nowhere to turn and you feel like your head's going to explode, I'm telling you right now, I've been there and it's a horrible place to be and you feel like you can't turn anywhere, it feels like you're trapped. If anybody feels like that ever, you can reach out to me. My number is at the bottom of the screen. That is my personal cell mobile number. You can WhatsApp me, you can text me anytime you want to. 
because I've been through that. I've had people post videos about it on the internet. I, when this whole red thing was going on, it was horrible. It's not a nice thing to deal with. And I know there's other people out there that are dealing with something similar all of the time. You can reach out to me. I've been there. I can help. So that's that. One more thing, just for old time's sake. What you gonna do, David Penn and Sean Hayden, when Craig Petty and everybody on Magic TV runs wild on you?